All right, Richard, I gotta be honest. I'm looking at the numbers right now. Things are looking bad. Views are down across the board. Revenue is plummeting, and we need a banger video ASAP. So let's see, let's see. FNAF! People love FNAF, right? Five Nights at Freddy's, they always do well on the channel. So we'll do another FNAF video, but uh, what have we not already covered? Let's see, let's see. We've done, uh, yep, we've done AI. We've done that, I'm seeing here. Uh, yep, uh, those weird doors from the first game. Yep, we did those, and oh man, we've done spring locks like 50 times, ish. But I mean, what else is there to even talk about? No, 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 no! Folks, it's about time I dove back into the wacky and wonderful world of Five Nights at Freddy's. For those who don't know, my FNAF videos are a little different than what you might be used to. We're not interested in any lore. You'll find no timeline ramifications or counting toes here. Instead, I like to take a look at some of the weirder machines and engineering choices in this series and see if we can find some real world science to explain them. Now I've covered a lot of weird stuff in this series, but I can say without a shadow of a doubt that none come close to what I have for you today. This, this is the real world science behind Fazgoo, Richard, hit that intro. For those who don't know, Fazgoo is sort of a meme in the FNAF community. The proverbial jump the shark moment, which is saying a lot for a series with soul metal, mind control computer viruses, and robots that don't know that they're robots. But hey, I made a whole video on sound illusion discs. At this point, I am ready for whatever insane thing this series wants to throw my way. I was not ready for this. As I'm guessing is the case with many of you, though I've heard the likes of the game theorists make jokes about this stuff all the time, I didn't actually know what Fazgoo was. Well, it turns out Fazgoo originates from the short story, He Told Me Everything, the third story in the seventh Fazbear Frights book, The Cliffs. And so, in preparation for this video, I did something that I swore I would never do. I read a FNAF book to learn more about Fazgoo. You made me read a FNAF book to Now I won't recap the whole story for you because I'll be honest, it's pretty bad. And the Fazgoo itself doesn't actually show up until literally three fourths of the way through the story. Most of it is just the main character, Chris, being a mildly snobby teenager on his first day of high school. He joins his school's science club run by Mr. Little, that one cool teacher we all had that everybody loves, who's also low-key a cult leader and maybe made of goo. Oh, you guys, you guys didn't have one of those teachers at your school? You didn't have a goo teacher? Mr. Little is holding a lock-in after school on Friday where all the kids will participate in an experiment he's running. He doesn't tell them any details, but he does inform them that it will require them pulling out one of their own teeth. And can I just say, as someone who was a science club STEM kid not that long ago, this book was clearly written by someone who was not a science club STEM kid. I mean, the science club kids were the most popular kids in school. No, no, no. Chris blows off seeing the new Revengers movie with the boys opening weekend on Friday in favor of going to school. No, no, no. And the kids are all way too gung-ho about this obviously evil science teacher's plans. Do y'all want to do some science? Yeah! Do y'all want to pull out some of your teeth? Yeah! And remember, you can't tell your parents about it. Yeah! So all the kids get to school and are given a Freddy Fazbear science kit, which by the way, is literally the only mention of Freddy's in this whole story. I guess in addition to selling pizza, they also make science 
stuff. They never explain it, but each kit contains a little petri dish of faz goo, a sticky pink substance. They all pull out one of their teeth, except for Chris, who's the only one who's like, yeah, you know what, actually, I think I'm gonna keep all my teeth where they are, thank you very much, and he uses one of his baby teeth instead. They all put their teeth in the faz goo and are instructed to place their finger in it so it can harvest some of their blood to start the reaction. Yeah, sure, this checks out. So Chris puts his finger in the goo, and it forms a long tether between them. And over the course of the night, the goo steals all of his organs and turns into an identical clone of him so it can steal his identity too. Ah, drat. So you can see why some people might have had some issues with this story. Now, right at the gate, it seems like I've got my work cut out for me if I want to try to explain any of this with real science. I mean, cloning? That's some Star Wars level science fiction right there. Artificially creating a complete and genetically identical copy of a living being using only one tiny, highly specialized part of their body? That is insane. Yeah, we did that. Let's talk about the real world science of cloning. The main way to create a real life clone is through a process called somatic cell nuclear transfer, or SCNT. And though the science and engineering that makes it possible is incredibly complicated, the theory behind it is actually quite simple. I'm sure you're all familiar with DNA the long molecule strings that determine everything about you. The color of your hair, your height, whether or not asparagus makes your pee smell a little funky, it's all determined by the precise order of molecules within your own personal DNA. So in order to create an identical clone of something, it needs to have the exact same DNA. DNA is stored within the nucleus of each and every one of your cells in structures known as chromosomes. Every cell has two chromosomes, one from your biological mother and one from your biological father. In order to create a clone though, we need both chromosomes to come from the same person. To do that, you're gonna need two ingredients. Ingredients, that is not a great word choice right there. It sounds like I'm reading a cookbook or something. Grandma's homemade cloning recipe. This recipe calls for two simple ingredients. The first is a somatic cell or body cell of the thing you're trying to clone. This could be a tissue cell, bone cell, blood cell, doesn't really matter, just so long as both sets of chromosomes are present. And the other thing you'll need is an egg cell from the same species as the thing you're trying to clone. To make your clone, start by removing the chromosome from the nucleus of the egg cell. Then, simply remove the chromosomes from your body cell and insert them back into the nucleus of the egg cell. Now that you have an egg cell with the genetic material of the creature you're hoping to clone, carefully insert it into a surrogate mother, let bake for 2-12 to 12 months depending on the species, and voila! You have a baby who is genetically identical to the original donor of the somatic cell. Bon appetit! Please don't eat it though. This may sound like some insane science fiction, but it's actually been done successfully in real life. The first and most famous example of cloning with mammals at least was Dolly the Sheep. Dolly was cloned from a cell from the mammary gland of a Finn Dorset sheep in July of 1996. Researchers from the Roslyn Institute just outside of Edinburgh, Scotland were trying to test if it was possible to create a clone of a complex mammal using only a single specialized cell. And what they found was, yes! Since every one of your somatic cells, even highly specialized ones, contain chromosomes with your complete DNA, you can take a cell from basically any part of the body and grow an entire complete clone from it. And just to be clear, I know it sounds like some insane mad scientist type stuff when I spell it out like that, but there was actually a ton of research and planning prior to this experiment. They weren't just like, 
Hey, what if we did this crazy thing and see what happens? Dolly was born in 1996 and sure enough, studies revealed that she was genetically identical to the DNA donor. And what's more, she was basically just a regular sheep with no adverse side effects or health issues when she was born. It's basically just like if you had an identical twin that also happened to be born six years after you to a completely different mother. Totally not weird at all. Interestingly, Dolly was perhaps more identical to her donor than even the researchers expected. See, DNA takes the form of long strands, and these strands are capped with structures called telomeres, which are basically just there to protect your DNA from damage. As you age, these telomeres slowly break down and wear away. However, when researchers took a sample of Dolly's DNA a year after she was born, they found that her telomeres were far shorter than other lambs of her age. The theory is that because Dolly's DNA was taken from an adult cell and not a usual reproductive cell, her telomeres were not able to fully form and instead grew to the same size as her donor. So effectively, while Dolly was born as a regular baby, she was biologically the same age as her donor, despite being born six years later. Richard, I'm gonna need some aspirin or something. Now, thankfully, this didn't result in any adverse physical effects in Dolly. She still aged the same rate as a normal sheep. And in fact, for being the world's first mammalian clone, Dolly lived a very normal life, and she was even able to have six lambs of her own in the natural way. She eventually passed away in 2003 at the age of six and a half, as opposed to the usual 11 to 12 year lifespan of a Finn Dorset sheep after developing lung cancer. However, this is not believed to be a side effect of her birth, it's actually relatively common among this breed of sheep. Since then, we've successfully cloned 25 species of animals, including rats, fish, cats, dogs, even two types of monkeys, though never a human. Now, you might be thinking, as I was when researching all this, that's all well and good, but why the hell would anyone want to create a clone? Well, there's actually a couple of reasons. Having a large quantity of genetically identical animals can be handy for testing out medicine. It makes results a lot more consistent and easier to compare with fewer confounding variables. For all you animal lovers, don't worry. Research suggests that this cloning process could be used to help increase the population of critically endangered species or even bring extinct animals back to life. There was an attempt to do this with an extinct breed of mountain goat called a Picardo, but the clone died shortly after birth because the DNA samples were too old and damaged. Now, if you're thinking, hey, this whole thing kind of sounds like Jurassic Park or something, you'd be right. This is exactly what John Hammond was doing with those blood cells from the mosquitoes, which means, yes, Jurassic Park is, at least in theory, absolutely, scientifically, 100% possible. Maybe that's in some better fences first though. The other big area of interest with clones is in the creation and study of stem cells with identical genetic material to an individual. If a patient is in need of some critical organ transplant, say you need a new kidney, you can't just stick any old kidney in there. Because if the genetic material is too different from your own, your body will think it's some sort of invasive virus or infection and it'll start to attack it. That's why you'll often hear about family members donating organs to those in need because they have similar genetic makeup so there's less risk for a rejection. But with cloning, you don't need to let the original egg cell grow into a full creature. You could, at least in theory, just grow it into a kidney with your exact DNA and effectively become your own organ donor. Now we've covered a lot of ground here, so before we get too deep in the weeds, I do want to take a step back and zoom out and bring us back to reality. You're watching a video about Fazgoo right now. 
So how does Fazgu hold up compared to this whole cloning business? Well, the fact that it's able to grow an entire clone identical to the original donor in every way using just a single tooth is actually spot on. This is exactly the sort of thing that the Dolly experiment proved was possible. Now it didn't have to be a tooth. It could have been, I mean, pretty much anything else. You just need one single cell. And I'll be honest, Mr. Little, it's a little weird that you made the kids rip out their teeth. Could have just hocked a loogie in there. Unfortunately though, that's where the similarities end. For starters, the process of extracting the DNA from the original cell is incredibly complicated, requiring microscopic pipettes and glass needles less than a tenth of a millimeter wide. Not some pink goop. Real clones also require a surrogate parent and the normal gestation period. They're born as regular babies, not the same age as the cloner. What do you call the, what do you call the thing that you've been cloned from? Like the clone is a clone of what? I don't, I genuinely don't know what the, what the like scientific name for that is. If anyone knows the real actual name, let me know in the comments. And lastly, and possibly most importantly, one of the major upsides of SCNT cloning is that the original donor is completely preserved in the process. You don't need to steal any of their organs or covertly replace them. The clone should have all the genetic material required to grow these organs themselves. In fact, one could argue that growing new organs is the whole point of making a clone in the first place. So all of these properties that can't be explained by real world cloning science must be some pseudoscience magical properties of the goo itself. So looking at all the ways Fazgoo is similar to SCNT cloning and the ways that it differs, I think we can get a pretty good idea of how exactly this stuff is supposed to work in universe. But I'm warning you, if you thought Fazgoo was bad before, it's about to get a whole lot worse. And I'll be honest, Richard and I, we've had our differences in the past, but even I wouldn't subject him to animating this, nor you to watching it. So, uh, I don't know, just throw up some sort of like landscape in the background, just some calming music for the next part. Yeah, I think that's, I think it's good. You know what, in fact, get me off the screen. Get, get me down off the screen. I don't wanna be here. I don't want people looking at me when they're hearing about this stuff, all right? Ready? Right, brace yourself. We're about to hit, I'm about to hit you with some insane stuff. You ready? Fazgoo is a magical womb. Yup. In this setup, it seems that the pink Fazgoo is fulfilling the role of the surrogate mother. Contained within is an egg cell already stripped of its genetic material. Through some chemical process, the Fazgoo is able to extract the genetic material from the tooth, or literally any other part of your body, Mr. Little, you freak. And once the DNA has been extracted, the egg cell is able to grow. The tendril that connects Chris to the goo is effectively an umbilical cord, providing nutrients to the growing clone. Now, typically, a human would take nine months to develop, and it would come out as a baby. But I suppose that's why it steals Chris's organs, it needs to speed up the process to grow into a fully grown teenager in a single night. And I just want to reiterate, this stuff apparently comes in a science kit sold by a f***ing pizza restaurant. And there you have it. Faz Goo fully explained using real world science. <laughs> I've finally done it. I've covered every single bit of insane technology and science that Scott and his crew could cook up. I've done it all. The work is done. Finally, I am free from FNAF. What? what? No, no, what is that? What is that? No! 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 That's not true! That's impossible! This video was made possible by all my patrons, including Alakazam, Aspa102, Big Dog Tie for the Win, Sidian, Sherry and Mark, The Boss Killer94, and Alberung Freud and Selican. You guys are 
the greatest.